Today I'm going to talk about how to publish an API. Here's our demo version of the Layer 7 API portal, which is built on a proprietary CMS and designed to be deployed 100% on-premise. For this company, Goods Warehouse, they're a retail vendor of hardware products, and they've made available their Acme Warehouse API so that third parties can build an application against that API, uh, have their customer base sell one of the products, one of Goods Warehouse's products, and if they do so, they'll get a kickback from Goods Warehouse based on what they've sold. So to publish that Acme Warehouse API and get this portal up and running, what I'm going to do first is log in as the API owner. Now here I'm brought to the dashboard and I've got a number of different pieces of functionality that I can access from here. The key thing I'm interested in, of course, is APIs. So I'll go ahead and click that and we'll get a refresh of the page here. What's happening is that the API portal is talking down to the Layer 7 gateway to find out what APIs are currently available. And you can see I've got a number of different APIs currently available on the gateway. Some applications have already been built out against these APIs by a number of different organizations. And they've got different statuses associated with them as well. But today we want to publish a new API. So I'm going to flip over to my Layer 7 Gateway interface. And here it is here. You can see that on the list over here, Services, I have a number of services already published. Most of these are already in my API portal. The one that isn't, the one I'm interested in today, the Acme Warehouse, is here. And here I have a basic routing call to the back end for that service. What I want to be able to do is set this as a portal managed service. I'll just drive it over here and save and activate. Now once I've done that, this policy that points at the Acme Warehouse API service is now going to be available in my list of APIs. I'll just click the APIs here, the page will refresh, and we should see it come in at the top of the page. Here it is now, Acme Warehouse is available for me. There's no applications built against it, no organizations are using it yet because it's not enabled. So in order to enable it, what we need to do is associate a level of service with it, what we call our API plans. Now, out of the box, we provide a number of API plans. One of them is a sandbox plan. You can really think of that as a basic service level for building applications against. We also have a test plan and a production plan. So as your developer would roll their application into production, you can assign different plans to them. And what the way that we distinguish these plans is by assigning a quota and a rate limit. In this case, for a production plan, we've got 100,000 hits a day. Maybe you want to make that down to an hour. It gives them a lot of traffic capabilities. Uh, and we're going to rate limit them down to 1,000 requests per second, so 1,000 concurrent requests per second. We can also restrict them by time of day and by day of week, if that's appropriate as well, so we can have them only available uh, between 9 and 5 on a Monday to Friday, if that's the way we want to go. So in this case, I have a number of plans already defined that I'm going to be using for my Acme Warehouse API. So let's go back and actually go ahead and publish that API. We'll just click on the APIs, bring up Acme Warehouse, and we'll start by giving it a title. So I'll just call this Acme Warehouse, same as what we have. I'll put a version number of one in here. Now I can set this API to private. I might want to do that if I want, for example, to beta test this API to a limited number of developers. Or maybe this is a uh, internal API that I don't want to expose externally. So I may make it private so that only my internal developers can access it. I'm going to skip that for now. I've also got another checkbox here called deprecate this API. So when I move from version 1 to version 2, there's a process associated with that. And I can easily go ahead and deprecate this API and ensure that my developers are not Im negatively impacted by that event. I want a EULA. I've got one here, standard EULA number 2. I'm going to put associated with it. And I'm going to go ahead and upload a WAML file. You don't need a WAML file, but 
since I have one already built for Acme Warehouse, I'm going to go ahead and choose that out of my list here. There it is right there. And I'll associate it here. Now that Waddle file will allow me to instantly activate our API Explorer so the Acme Warehouse API will be available uh, to interactively interact with in the API Explorer. And I have applicable plans here. I'm going to go ahead and choose all of them because I think we can uh, uh, allow developers to go ahead and create this in a sandbox mode, test it out, and even roll it into production. Now when I click Save, what's going to happen is the status will change from not enabled to enabled, and that will allow organizations to start building applications against this API. But before they can start building, they're going to need some documentation. So let's cut over to our documentation page here. You can see I've already created a placeholder for our documents here in the sidebar. And I have a blank page right now. So I'd like to fill that in with my documentation. The way that we do that in the CMS underlying the API portal is to go into staging mode. So here in staging mode, I can now edit that page. If I go ahead and click on standalone, I pull up an editor. So the first thing to note about the editor here is that I can associate an API with this page. There's my Acme Warehouse API. Once I've done that, the association to the Acme Warehouse API is complete. Now if I go ahead, for example, and set Acme Warehouse API to private, uh, this document would then be hidden from anybody who doesn't who hasn't been explicitly granted permission to access the API. Now I can start typing in here. I can go ahead and record whatever information I want, um, enter any parameters I need. I can go ahead and format this using the included editor here. Uh, but I've already created all this information in a text file here. And in fact, I've done it all in HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy all this information and bring it back into here. I won't bother with this edited information. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the source button and this allows me to see everything that I've put on the page in HTML. So I'm going to paste in that HTML code. Here it is here. And once I close it up, I get a preview of what it might look like. I can even expand this editor and have a look at what it looks like as well. I'll go ahead and save that. And there you have it. So this is our documentation. I've created some CSS tables that have already been applied here. And you can see it looks like this. And it even includes an example as well at the bottom down here. So this is our staging mode. If I was to go to published, the warehouse API is still a blank page. So it hasn't yet been published. It's only in staging mode. And that allows me to pass this around to subject matter experts, uh, make sure they approve before I bring this into production. Once everybody is fine with it and has reviewed it and okayed it, we can then go ahead and push the publish button and that will take it from staging mode into published. In fact, when I cut back to publish now, there's the page. So we've provided our documentation, our API is live. One other thing that's been created for us is a forum. So here within the forums, you can see I have a list of all the APIs that I'm currently uh, making available to my developers. And you can also see that Acme Warehouse has been added to the list as well. So on publication, Acme Warehouse Forum will automatically be generated for you. Now I talked about the Waddle file that I had before. The Waddle file allows me to populate my API Explorer. The API Explorer allows me to interactively work with any API that I've published. There's the Acme Warehouse API now. I'll go ahead and select it. And based on the Waddle file, there's a number of resources associated with it as well. I'll choose the list products, and I'm going to submit a GET request against the Acme Warehouse in order to find out what products are available. Once I execute this request, I'm given a response that shows me a number of different article, article items that are available. I'm going to go ahead and 
copy one of these product IDs because then I can go back in and do a product details query by providing that product ID. And when I execute it this time, I can find out what the actual name of that product is. So in this way, I can interactively explore what's available within the API.